but what we're going to do today is we are going to let the Sermon on the Mount be the sermon. And then over the next few months, we'll take each passage and break it down to have a sermon about the text. So this is really just um, beginning to get us like an appetizer, if that makes sense. But God can work already through the power of his word. And I would ask that we would be willing for God to encourage us through some of this. But if you look in your bulletin, I've already asked a question of what things maybe are we wrestling with because of what was read today. Not everything we'll hear in the Sermon on the Mount is going to be ear-tickling. That's not what Jesus came to do. He came to tell truth. He came to lead in the way everlasting. (laughs) So there are some of those things that we are like, yes, we agree with. God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Amen. But then he's going to talk about, you've heard it said, but I say. And the, the view of what this image is trying to show is that he prays in the Lord's Prayer, God, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you'll notice, if you look close enough, that the middle image of these three mountain pictures is upside down. <laughs> Now, you might think it looks like a mountain continues, but if you look at the sky, you'll see the sky on the outside ones is on top, and the sky in the middle one is on the bottom, because God's kingdom is upside down to the kingdom that we are used to living. When we say God's kingdom come, we just had an In the Waiting series about waiting for God to come, and he's already bringing his kingdom through his people, through his spirit, and we can already begin shifting the world by following his teaching. And this day, we're going to let Jesus' sermon be told by a variety of voices and versions. They will be on the screen for you to follow along, but I encourage you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, and we will read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. But let me pray to prepare our hearts to receive God's word And for us not to just read scripture today. God can speak in so many ways. It says the Bible is sharper than a double-edged sword. Right? It is alive and it is powerful. And so as God's word is read over us, it can have an impact on life change. The other question in your bulletin was, do we always need materials added to our devotional? (laughs) When was the last time you just opened your Bible and read your Bible and that was enough? It doesn't have to always happen. Devotions are good. Commentaries are helpful. But God's word is powerful. And today, we're going to let that be the source of the Spirit's change in our lives. So let me pray, and I'll invite the first readers to come up. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for being a God who gave us your word. We looked at yet last week that your word is inspired by God. All scripture is God-breathed. And so God, tonight, this morning, today, as we hear your word read, we hear you speaking over us. And God, we ask that this would not just be a, a box that's checked, that it not be something that we've never done before that gets done today. No, God, we want your spirit to teach us through the reading of your word. And God, we ask that you would use us those that are reading and those in this room, to be kingdom bringers, to be people who bring your kingdom to this earth, who live lives as you've called us to live. So God, begin a good work in us, and we know you are faithful to complete it, as we learned in Vacation Bible School. So God, may you start working in the hearts of those that are here and online because of what you speak over us today. But God, we need your help to receive it without distraction. We need your help to to not just hear words that are on the screen or words that are in a book in front of us. No, God, these are your living and active words for change. Words that are powerful. Words that are for our good. So God, may we experience your power even this morning. And may you be our teacher through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. All right. So 
seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor of spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will show, be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the pa peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Speaking up with verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, verse 21, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If, you're, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body goes into hell.
angels also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it is said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it, it, it is the footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. You have heard it, it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him on the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows that you, what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we for have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. When you fast, when you fast don't look somber like the hypocrites do, for they just figure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, 
Put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light within you is darkness, how deep is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, since either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. God bless you guys. I miss you guys. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the, what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample on them under their feet, and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks on the door will be opened. Among, who among you, if his son asks for a bread and gives him a stone, or if he asks for a fish and gives him a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to uh, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also for them. For this is the law of the prophets. Either through the narrow gates, enter through the narrow gates, for the, the gate is wide and the road is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who uh, go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it.
Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Not everyone calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built this built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the one winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and the great and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. At the close of the sermon, I always ask for you to give time to reflect on what you have heard. James says for us to be doers of the word, not hearers only. There have not been necessarily applications of what to do tomorrow that I have added to the message, but God has already put on our hearts things to respond to. So let me encourage you to pray even now with me. I'll give some time for silence for you to pray to the Lord, and then I will pray over you. And the worship team will come up and close us in a song, and I will be available over here on the side if you would like to pray more, or if you'd like to ask questions, or tell me something that God has put on your heart. But God's word is enough. Joanna wrote in the newsletters a story we heard on the chosen presentation on Wednesday of a story that came from a missions trip and they brought Bibles into the Muslim community and a man found them and got the Bibles and they said, let us come with you so we can preach. And he said, Bible preach. And that's what it was today. We let the Bible preach. Um, but if we're not careful, it can be one that we just listen to and move on. So please, in this moment, spend time with the Lord in response to the message that God has given us this morning. So let's pray. Father God, 
we're honest, we live in a busy world. We have a lot of things to accomplish, and schedules that get filled up. Remind us in this moment the importance and productivity of prayer, of time spent with you. And God, for many of us, we don't know what to say. We don't know how to pray. We ask that your spirit would come on our behalf to the throne of God. God, it says in your word that the Holy Spirit translates our groanings. And so this morning we are groaning to you, asking for you to guide us. Because the flow of our culture is so strong. And to follow your kingdom is so hard. But with you, all things are possible. So God, through your Holy Spirit, please give us the strength to stand against the current. Give us the strength to move in the direction of your kingdom, even if that is against the flow of our culture. There are things that you've called us to do and to be that are so difficult because it goes against the flow of our own self, flesh, desires of pride and selfishness and pleasure, God, I ask that you, through your Spirit, would motivate us and inspire us and empower us to live your kingdom come. God, various people in here probably are going to apply different things in their life because your word is powerful in that way. But God, I ask that you would allow us not to leave this time without being changed more into the likeness of your Son. Do not allow us to leave this morning without coming before your throne in time of confession, in time of praise and gratitude, because God, you have called us to live lives that are holy because you are holy. So God, I ask that you would, for those that are tempted, that are um, maybe thinking of other things to move into next, God, do not allow us to leave this morning without coming before your throne in response to your message. And God, we are excited to see what you are going to do in and through us the rest of today and the days to come. But we need your help. So God, continue to work. As it said in the Lord's Prayer, you give us our daily bread. And so thank you for feeding us this morning from your word. But may we strive tomorrow, maybe even later today, to read it again. To come to you again. As the deer pants for water, Lord, may our souls long for you. Because your name is due to be lifted high, to be glorified. We want to do that. But we also want for our lives to be modeling to the world what it means to be children of God. So help us. Lead us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.